All right, so if you're gonna be swapping out your oil pan gasket, go ahead and that's your part number for the oil pan gasket. And this is an O-ring for the oil pump that's in there, which you'll see. It's just a new O-ring. When we swap it, you'll see it. Make sure you ask for this when you go to Dodge to get your new oil pan gasket. Once we do that, if you're looking at the bottom of your motor, take a look down here you'll see all of those bolts, all of them. The next thing you wanna do is pull out all those bolts. As long as you've drained your oil already, shouldn't be too bad. If you have an impact, it's gonna make quick work of this. Some of those side bolts, like up there, you might need a angled bit, but you should be able to still get them. Next thing is, is if you have this cross member brace right here under your engine, what you're gonna have to do is drop that so it's 18 on one side, 18 on the other, and then drop that brace right out of the way so we can get the pan low enough. Might take a little bit of a love tap, but it'll come down. Literally, I didn't even have to love tap it. I was able to just kind of give it a hammer fist and it popped down, as you can see. It was full of a lot of rust. So, from here, you should be able to loosen those last bolts and the whole pan will come out. Once you get all those bolts out, make sure you take the putty scraper. These are a drywall tool and just separate the gasket. I need my hands for both of these, but you literally slide it in between the gasket. If you turn it a little bit, it'll start to separate and take this whole oil pan right out. As you can see, pan's been lifted out of the way. Next thing for security purposes, so we don't have any chance of breaking it, pull out your oil dipstick. I'm gonna put this one just off to the side here as we don't want any chance of that getting damaged. Now that the oil dipstick is out of the way, we can go underneath and there's gonna be a few more bolts we have to take out. So next thing we need to do is pull out the sump arm so that way we can do this. So see that 13 mil right there? Right where my finger is? I love how I try to use lighting and it just wrecks everything. And then you can see there's one more bolt right here. So pull out that one and pull out that one we should be able to pop this down and get it out of the way. As you can see, that is the O-ring we're gonna replace. So you can either do that now, I would actually do it later. We're gonna leave it on there and keep those bolts nice and safe and out of the dirt. So looking up, it looks like everything is free. Let's go ahead and try and peel this down. For those again that are wondering, what does he mean by going around it with a putty scraper? I mean, it's pretty easy, but this is all I'm doing. And then you pry a little bit, pry it a little bit. As you go, the seal will break along. See, that whole corner just let go. Haha. Oh. Uh -huh. Now I'll just work on this side and then it'll come right out. Just like that, she's out. So this is what I was talking about. See how they added RTV right here? It's kinda, they've just basically put a little bit of gasket maker here and a little bit of gasket maker here around these holes just in case for any reason there's any difference between the block and the timing cover. And that way it seals up. So, if you want, go ahead and get it ready. Oh, you can see they also did it back here, and that is for your rear retainer. So go ahead if you want and throw a little bit on the rear retainer right here. I'll show you anyway. I have some RTV and I'm gonna be doing that. First, I'm gonna get this one out of the way. When you go underneath here, you're gonna see the edge. Now you can use a razor blade, you can use uh, scraper, I like to go around first and hit it with the scraper. Get as much smooth and then you can go on an angle and make sure you don't dig out the other, like the time and cover gasket and the rear uh, retainer gasket. So now that, as you can see, I'll just dig that out a little bit. And then along all the other rusted parts, I'll use this. Also, I used this on the front rim here because there's no way I'm gonna access it with this. I mean, I could try, but I'm not gonna get the angle I want. And after I went around it, I felt it, it's smooth, which is great. But see those rusty edges right there? 
I want to hit that with the good old wire brush on the impact. And I'm just going to go like that. And I'm going to go along and just grind some of that out. After all that is just nice and smoothened up and you get rid of as much of that as you can. Just in case you're wondering why I choose to do it this way. Look at how quick this goes. That's already from one screw to the next screw. I go a little bit more and it'll be smooth. Like I said, it's quick and seamless. I don't want to bore you with me just using this, but also wear eye protection because those bristles can fly off and if they fling in your eye, you're losing an eye. First things first, quickly grab this O-ring with your nails or however else you want to do it and slide it off. Next thing you want to do, use a little bit of oil that's on your fingers if you want and then just lube that up and slide it on there. So it's pretty easy. See where these lines are? That's where you're going to goop. You basically want it so it's actually telling you right where it's going to meet the body. So I'm going to just put a nice gob right here and a gob right there. Same with the back. Just a gob in this area. And then what it'll do is it'll spread out as you tighten it. So the stuff I'm using is the 90 minute stuff. This is basically just gasket maker black. Pretty much RTV. Again, just uh, apply it and then have your sump stuff ready so that way we can add that oil arm and I'm literally like I said just gonna apply some in here yeah I'm going a little crazy but whatever crazy's my middle name actually it's not it's Norman no I'm kidding actually it is okay so just like that and same right here all right that it's not the prettiest but to tell you the truth it's going to spread out as we tighten it down and as long as i have enough in there that it's going to seal i'm happy so now that we've done that you need to hold that gasket up and pop that pump arm back on and put the bolts in now get your um, torque wrench ready the bolt which is this one is 108 inch pounds and then this one right here is 21 foot pounds so again, trying to explain, like I said, it's like an hourglass. You start in the center and then you go over to here and then you go to the other side and then you work your way over, always doing figure eights. And if you do that, then you'll go from the inside all the way to the outside. You will see some oozing out the sides from where we put that uh, RTV in. That's actually a good sign, that's fine. The other thing I would always tell you to do as well is after you get all those bolts all torqued down, I would still do one final lap all the way around, making sure that they're all torqued just in case you accidentally missed one. If you do that, then 100% your pan's gonna be nice and sealed. And that's it for sealing the pan.